It wasn't long before Boxall, the fourth officer, poked his head round my door and said, Do you know we've struck an iceberg? I know you've struck something, I told him, not thinking it anything serious and feeling none too pleased. Then he said, The water's up to F deck in the mailroom. When the boats were stripped and cleared, they were swung out and lowered to the level of the boat deck. Just a little while before they were ready to swing out, I happened to meet the captain, and I asked him, by cupping my hands over his ear and yelling at the top of my voice, Shall I get the women and children away, sir? He just nodded, so I started to fill the first boat. Several of us scrambled up onto the slippery bottom of the raft, and it was from there I saw the Titanic sink. As I watched, I could see her bow getting deeper and deeper in the water, with the foremost sticking up above the surface, whilst her stern lifted higher and higher, till it was right out of the water.
or Friday the 13th. <laughs> so I think what has happened is some of the ghosts of the Titanic have visited us today. I usually have technical problems only when I get my talk on ships about the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> Never fails. But this is the first time for the Titanic, and it perhaps is a reason for it. Discover the story today along with me as I watch it up here. <laughs> so with that, I'll tell you that if you'll push the next button, that's me. <laughs> you can see me up here. The Titanic, it's a really a story that just never ends. And the one thing I have to tell you when we talk about the Friday the 13th, when the Titanic, there was lifeboat number 13. That was a lucky number for all those people who were in it. They all survived. <laughs> so it kind of changes, might change your attitude about Friday the 13th. And I want to tell you, I first got interested in the Titanic in eighth grade by holding Walter Lord's book inside my textbook in class, which was about the only way to get through English for me. And a, a night to remember, it's a wonderful book. He did his book by interviewing 56 survivors of the Titanic. And I'll tell you about the movies because his book got made into a movie as we get along. I, I want to tell you I do a lot of book signings and when I talk to parents and grandparents and teachers, and it's really a privilege to have a teacher say that they like my book because it cites original primary sources that they can use to teach a class in. Nothing could be more flattering to a historian or, or an author. But what's really important is what I hear from them when they say they've got a Titanic book at some point in time for their child, their grandson, their granddaughter, their nephew and niece, and it inspired them to start reading, reading about history. And that's one of the most important things you can do if you gift this coming Christmas a book about the Titanic. Any Titanic book is fine. And to a child you think needs some encouragement, or that if you already have a Titanic in the family, then that's a great gift. My books are available on Amazon and in Audible and in print and Kindle. This is my website if you want to reach me. He belonged to Mr. Murdoch, who was the first officer of the ship. And he was officers were allowed to bring their dogs on board. You I don't know if anybody's seen any dogs around lately, but there are some on ships today. They're big dogs. They assisted fishermen in the cold, icy waters of Newfoundland. They have uh, two layers of fur. And I'm told by people who have had these dogs, you don't own them, they own you. They're big, they take over the couch, they, they slobber, they go everywhere they want. They're just very lovable. Well, when the Titanic went down, survivors where they were lucky enough to be in lifeboats or pulled in the lifeboats, Rachel didn't mind swimming along in the sea. He was out there for until the Carpathia came along to rescue people. The captain of the Carpathia, he walked up on the deck. He heard a dog barking. They had already picked up five dogs, so they weren't surprised. They were little ladies' lap dogs. But this was the bark of a big, loud dog. And it caused the captain to go up to the starboard bow, that's the right-hand forward part of the ship, and look down. And even though they thought they'd already rescued everyone, they saw, he, he saw this one more lifeboat. There were 70 people in it. Now, you couldn't hear them screaming because their voices were completely drained and, and hoarse from screaming and yelling all night or praying. And Therefore, Rigel's bark alerted the captain. They rescued all those people. So he was their voice. They saved a total of five dogs, including Rigel, and a potbelly pig, and I can't tell you whether or not they ate the pig. <laughs> Some research doesn't include the details you really want. The, the band of the Titanic, there were, I think there were eight musicians they're remembered in history for playing various tunes on the ship as it went down and entertaining people. Autumn and Near My God Today. And then they were remembered for playing ragtime. Now, you know, when you, you 
all have heard plenty of bands play and entertain here on the ship or elsewhere in your life. And you know they play a variety of things, and I'm sure that in the two and a half hours or so before the ship went down, I'm sure they had an opportunity to play a variety of things. So people will say this was the last thing they played, or that one was. Well, remember, it all depends on perspective about any detail of the sinking of the Titanic. What the band was playing, at what position the ship was when it finally went down, did it break in half? You know, some people would disagree on how many funnels the ship had. Well, it just depends on your perspective. Wallace Hartley played a violin, and there's even uh, a theory involved today that the violin has been recovered, was sold at auction in England, they never would disclose the buyer or the price, and then it was put on display at various... This is the Titanic as it left Queenstown, which is now known as Cobb in Ireland. That was its last stop. What I'd like to do is to try to tell you the story of, this, of the disaster through some of the news reports of the time. This news report came out about five days later, and they started to tell the details of the disaster. They had searched the best restaurants in London for waiters, and they hired these great Italian waiters, 50 of those were recruited. None survived. Postal clerks came from both Britain and the United States. None survived. The band I told you about, there were eight. None survived. The engineers, none survived. The ship's boys to run errands and back and forth, none survived. The pursers, none survived. The, this artist's concept of a diagram of the ship, a cutaway, Remember, this was done in 1912. Five days after the ship sank, this appeared in, in the uh, sphere of London. Unbelievable that they could get that detail. So as the headlines came out, the first news of the sinking of the Titanic came from the telegraph room, or the radio room of the Titanic. It went to Cape Race in Newfoundland and other ships at sea. And one of the first reports to come into New York City came to the top floor of the Wanamaker department store. And there was a young man there of 19 years of age who was the first one to receive it and then began to pass it on across the country. And when that happened, was a, as that began to be communicated elsewhere, that's when the mishap started in the reporting and people went with what they heard or were able to write down. His name at the, at the Wanamaker department store, department store was David Sarnoff, and he went on to found the NBC radio and television networks. You can see by this headline here, they, they said the big ship was racing through the night, all steam, crowded on. Actually, not true. There were five rulers they weren't using. And there's a reason for that, and we'll see other examples of how they said they were trying to set a record, and it was a mad dash to get across the Atlantic Ocean that caused this tragedy. It's just not true. The story was embellished, it was fabricated, it was miscommunicated, and golly, you know, you'd think it was today. <laughs> so some got it right, and they, they once that worked harder at getting the story right, in many cases succeeded. And the reason I say they weren't trying to set a record, they couldn't get the record. That was already held and would be retained by the Mauritania and Lusitania of the Canard Line. There is no way that those ships were built for speed, that Titanic and the Olympia, the Olympic was built for to be the 747 of the age to carry a lot of cargo and a lot of passengers. And the others were built to be sleek and fast. Again, you see this cutaway, they can imagine, they, they started to get survivor reports. Well, what happened? You were there, you were on the deck. What did you see? So there are people who are witnesses saying there were chunks of ice coming down on the deck. So the artists started to put together their concept of what it looked like here with the ship, a cutaway of the ship, scraping past the bird. I mean, this is five days later with the tools that they had at the time. You have to really admire that if you're involved in graphics at all today. You can just imagine how they were able to do that in 1912.